week. All right, so I decided I'm going to try doing something, another weekly type thing. I'm going to pick my favorite knife for the week. And uh, most likely next week I'll forget that I even did this. So uh, it'll probably be the first and last edition of Knife of the Week. But uh, anyway, let's look at some contenders. Uh, this is one I show all the time. This, I believe, is a 144K. It's a golfer, but uh, interestingly, it has the square Phillips. This one has the bail. Dates to sometime in the mid-60s. It's also got the infamous long nail file. This one's unusually. It's nice and tight. And uh, my buddy Jeremy uh, uh, put a thought in my head. He, he said that it seems like the ones are, they're a lot more stable when they're in the two layer. And I think there might be something to that. I think uh, having the uh, scale, even though it's plastic right there, kind of makes them a little more sturdy. Because on like uh, three and four layer knives, when they're in the center, these are often like super loose down here. But yeah, nice little bail. This is when I fixed uh, the, it was, didn't have any scales on it. It didn't have a back scale or something. Came with the aluminum tweezers. And we've got those infamous 84 millimeter scissors. Next up, got that clip blade, lovely. And then last but not least is that fabulous main blade with the four line tank stamp up front, the Victorinox, Switzerland, stainless Ross Fry. And it's got uh, William Tell's umbrella, keeping Victoria dry, the officer Swiss. Bam. Uh, next up, this is one of my absolute favorites, and I actually had to fix this. I've showed this before. This is a Boker uh, six-tool camp knife, and uh, somebody this had been repaired previously. I didn't know it till yeah. These the blades started binding up, and then finally this little a chunk broke out here, and I realized it had like a nail driven through it as a pin, and then it was covered in solder. It was very weird. It was like it was covered in either solder or maybe jewelry solder or something like that it was very weird it, it looked like this but this is actually a, just a nickel silver pin but this was a busted up nail in there so i took it out and drove a brass pin through there now everything is nice tight and right let me tell you this is one of my absolute favorite officer style knives i think this might be the the finest one i've ever come across and uh, this reamer, bam, actually, this is an awl, technically, I believe, or a punch. But this shape of this punch is just super, super cool. Um, where did my camera go? I had another knife here. I can't find it. But uh, what it is, like uh, the Victorinox punches from this era, they get very skinny towards the tip. When they're closed like this, you'll notice they go to keep the punch looking good like this it kind of tapers towards the outside and then there'll be a gap in here but this is a much fuller heftier punch like you definitely couldn't break this one off some of the victorinox ones i've seen occasionally you see one tipped because they get so thin up at the tip this just gives you a stronger tip it's still nice and sharp but it's a lot stronger got a very uh long lean four turn corkscrew up here we've got the old Warner style can opener. Notice it's got the little tree, the little chestnut tree emblem on it. Got the cap lifter, great snap on that. Again, this has the tree, it's almost faded away, but you can just barely make out what's left of that tree. Last but not least, the clip blade with the tree. And then laster but not leaster, this mother feaster right here, this main blade with this great H. Boker and Co. Solage in Germany, uh, pre-war tank stamp. They used this tank stamp from 1869 all the way up till I think 1942 or 44 or something like that. And it's also got the tree on back. This is some of the best steel I've ever had on a knife. This knife, for whatever reason, it just has a wicked edge to it. And, uh, it, it hasn't gone, I sharpened it once and it's just held up remarkably well. I really like the steel on that knife. 
and I forget what they, they had a brand name for it. Ward Ward Rose or something like that. They had like uh, they had their own Inox, uh, what you know, branded name for their steel. Finally, I got a new one uh, to uh, my collection. Well, I've actually had it for a couple weeks. It was in a box. I had gotten a bunch of knives one day and I just set this aside and never looked at it again. But this is another 60s golfer. But this one's cool. It has no scale tools and uh, no bail, no key ring. Uh, this is like, uh, you know, the close, how the modern, the later golfers, they rarely had the key rings and stuff. Just the, uh, the prototypical golfer. It's got the five turn fluted corkscrew. Bickety bam. This also has my, the loathed long nail file. And there's why the tips busted off of it. I have reshaped it. It still does its job. It's just ain't as pretty. Still plenty of nail nick left. It's just unfortunate that usually that's not the weak point. Those are broken all the time. I mean, that's just from abuse. Somebody pried with it or something, but these joints fall apart all the time. But again, like, uh, they do seem to hold up better on the golfers than they do on like the climber smalls or the hunt, huntsman smalls. Uh, so next we've got some 84 millimeter scissors and uh, this knife didn't have these scissors, but I had this other half that I got with another knife that had a broken scissor. So that worked out perfectly. And it even it still had the original spring. It just was missing the uh, outer scissor half. Next up is again, a clip blade. It's got some discoloration to it. It must've had some kind of chemical on it. I've wiped it off and I mean, I'm going to polish it up, but still, it's just weird that it's got that gold color to it. It's like something got in there because the main blade doesn't look like that. It's just that clip blade. Again, the four line tank stamp, the Victoria Umbrella, Ella, Ella, A, A, A. Under William Tell's umbrella, Ella, Ella. Anyway, so who will be the knife of the week? Uh, I don't know. It's got to be. It's got to be this guy here. This is the finest uh, Swiss Army knife I've ever got. Period. And it's not Swiss. That's the funny part. It's just a beautiful knife. Uh, it's you know it's thick. Like let's look at a here is a like a a seventies Victorinox, and you can see the blade stock is a little bit thicker even than that one yeah just by a hair not much the opening layer is substantially thicker though see that that's a thicker by almost a full liner by, by a full millimeter very cool but man this is just a great knife and uh the fact that it survives and that it's so uh, intact is why this is one of my favorite ones i carry that with me nearly every day a lot of times i pick up a different knife because i'm like oh, i carry this knife all the time and i get halfway towards the door and i'm like eh, i'm gonna go back and get my boker and i do it all the time and uh yeah sorry not sorry anyway thanks for watching i'll see you in the next one degrees out of here